Second Corinthians chapter 9 The Collection for Christians in Jerusalem Now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints. For I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, seeing that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers, so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated. to say nothing of you, for being so confident. So I thought it it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an exaction. The Cheerful Giver The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely, He has given to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread to for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of the service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ, and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Second Corinthians chapter 10 Paul defends his ministry. I, Paul, myself, entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. I, who am humble, went face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence, as I count on showing against some who suspect, suspect us of walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when her obedience is complete. Look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, let him remind himself that as he, just as he is Christ, so also are we. For even if I boast a little too much of our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up, not for destroying you, I will not be ashamed. I do not want to appear to be frightening to, you, frightening you with my letters. For they say his letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech of no account. Let such a person understand that what we say by letter, when absent we do, when present. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. But we will not boast beyond limits, but will boast only with regard to the area of influence God assigned to us. To reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though as though we did not reach you. For we were the first ones to come all the way to you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond limit in the labors of others. But our o- hope is that as your faith increases, Our area of influence among you may be greatly enlarged, 
so that we may preach the gospel in the lands beyond you without boasting a work already done in another's area of influence. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord, for it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. Bye, guys.